It's comforting, yeah. Okay, can anybody hear me? Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the 8.30 breakout session of the Open Simulator Confer Community Conference 2013. As a reminder to our in-world and web audiences, you can view the full conference schedule on our website at conference.opensimulator.org and you can post your questions in local chat, on the US Ustream chat or tweet your comments using the hashtag OSCC13. This hour, we are happy to introduce Andres Reynolds, who will be presenting the session Game Modeling and Open Simulator. Hello, everyone. Good to see everybody here. And uh, as she said, I'm Andres Renault in World and Mary Sean Bach in Real Life. And it's good to see everybody attending the conference. This is very exciting. And we, what, uh, what I will be addressing today is game modeling and open simulator. 
it deals with the um, importing of actual mesh models into uh, open simulator environment and some of the tricks and and tips that you could uh, certainly help make the method a little easier so we're going to jump right in and get started okay I will be taking uh, questions at the end, and so you know, keep track of those, and uh, I am them to my my conference aide here, and we will get those addressed. Okay. One of the first tricky things that pops up, and not everyone knows this, especially if you're not a, a regular modeler, is about the day format, which is um, the format that we use to bring in models from. Um, outside applications into OpenSim. Now the tricky thing about the day is is that um, it's not the same. Not all day are the same. They come in different versions just like any of the software does. And that causes a little bit of problem with us because some of the versions of day do not import directly into OpenSim if cleanly if at all. Okay? So that's why a lot some models will come in and some won't. It's the version of day that they have used um, is not compatible. Okay, so that's some, something definitely to keep in mind when you are um, looking at different models on the internet. You want to try and bring one in. Okay, if it doesn't come in, it's not compatible. Now there is a lot of information about the day format. All you have to do is Google it, and it's got a, its own wiki page, and you can certainly read about the uh, the format. Although it is pretty dry reading. Okay. But definitely, there may be ways to there may be ways to convert. But unfortunately, I'm not familiar with that. A more advanced model would probably know how to convert one version of day to another. Okay. Now, two of the programs that are often used for mesh modeling is Blender is the big one, and a lot of people do use Blender for Open Simulator. As a matter of fact, it's a full, what we call full-featured modeling program because it handles everything from modeling to animation. Um, it saves out many different formats. You can even save out your animation files uh, for BVH that go come right in directly into OpenSim with a few little tweaks. And um, so if you're looking to get into modeling uh, and don't want to spend a lot of money, I would definitely recommend learning Blender. They recently came out with, not too long ago, came out with a new version, and it's much easier to use interface-wise. Okay? The older version to me, as actually as an experienced modeler, was difficult. It was difficult to use. But the new one is much easier. It's to me, it's almost similar to Max, if anybody's ever played with uh, uh, Max, 3DS Max. The second one, and the one I personally use and love, is AC3D. And I do have a note card that um, has the URL and everything. If anybody wants one at the end of the conference here, at the end of the discussion, I'll be happy to hand that out to you. AC3D is just a modeler. But the neat thing about AC3D is that the day format as well as sculpties, sculpts come right in to Open Simulator straight straight off. Very easy. Very easy. And it's very easy to use. It's a push-pull. That's pretty much it. Pretty, pretty close to SketchUp, I would say, but actually even a little bit simpler. So it's great for a beginning modeler. Very, very good. And they have a lot of neat... Um, lessons on their website, okay. but it does it does import directly into Open Simulator either the sculpties or the polygon models, or mesh models as we like to call it here in OS. The next thing we want to talk about and keep in mind is polygons and prims. They're pretty similar, so um, you want to keep in mind how big is your model. Uh, one of the ways you can do that is by counting your polygon items in your models created with your modeling software. And then it's very much so set, like counting the prims in your open sim models to gauge how big your model will be. One of the aspects that we want to keep in mind with game modeling or open sim modeling, which is extremely similar, is that you want to go for 
low prim models. And um, it applies both if you're working with a game engine or if you're working with OpenSim. And this is my quote. You're welcome to use it. It's 90% texture, 10% model. Okay? That's a great way to think about it. So the look that you're getting is going to be, you know, uh, based on your uh, texture more than anything else. So it's something nice to uh, think about when you're building. In AC3D, this is a screenshot from AC3D. And I uh, know it's a little difficult to see. But at the bottom here, it, it actually gives me all of the totals of what the model consists of, the surfaces and the polygons. And so every modeling software, including Blender, has this ability where you can pop up the information and see how large your model is. Okay. It's something good to check um, as you're modeling to make sure it's not getting too heavy. Okay. I'm going to discuss a little bit about low prim modeling. And um, as, as I said earlier, it's important to try and uh, keep a focus on keeping those amounts as low as possible with making a very qu good quality model. And I've seen this done, uh, just beautiful, beautiful models um, done in OpenSim itself. For example, what we see here in, in this conference is just amazing, the work they've done. Okay. Two of the tips the big tips for working with your outside modeling software, <coughs> excuse me, to help keep your poly counts low is to make sure that you're using cuts and extrusions because when you're cutting your model, it actually does not, it actually helps to keep the model low as long as you're not doing too many cuts. A cut would be in OpenSim would be similar to one sphere or another sphere and then merging them, okay? And be sure that you group or link your models before you import them. That's also very important. Um, just like in OpenSim, when you go to link your models together, you want to do the same thing in your modeling software. And it, um, Blender, I know, has it as well as AC3. They both have a group um, function where you can actually make your model one piece. Now three good additional three good tips for importing to keep your low poly count is cut and extrude. Now if you're not familiar with the extrude um, function, what it does is that let's say you're building a table and you want to make the legs of the chair. Well, you cut the material, you cut the block so that you actually have a leg, um, a square, just like in SketchUp, if you've ever worked with SketchUp, and you just grab that and pull it. That's an extrude. So you're actually making four legs out of one piece, one material. Also, keep in mind um, how much textures you're actually using. The less textures that you use per model, the lower the rendering the lower the rendering rate is for the for Open Simulator or your game engine, um, because it takes a lot more rendering power to process all those textures. Okay. Now, SketchUp and Open Sim. This is a fun little experiment that I've been working with, and I wanted to share it with all of you. Yes, you can bring SketchUp models into Open Sim. Okay, I've developed an air, uh, airport on my sim and I actually have models from open from SketchUp in that airport. Uh, a plane, I have a tower, um, I have a uh, just various different models you see at an airport basically but they all are from SketchUp, they're great warehouse, 3D warehouse. That's a little bit, um, it's very easy to bring them in but there are definitely some steps you want to take in order to use this and I definitely recommend you guys go if you have not downloaded SketchUp it's free and definitely it's worth looking at all the wonderful models they have in their warehouse tons and tons of models that are free to use okay or they have in their warehouse 
Now in AC3D, I use that exclusively to bring in my SketchUp models. There is a function in AC3D that allows me to um, reduce the, the count of a model. Okay? I don't use that because it tends to mess up SketchUp models. So if your modeling program does have a reduced polygons, don't use it. Okay? It will mess up the models from coming from SketchUp. Okay? But in SketchUp, there's another trick you can use to help slim those models down before you bring them in. When you open SketchUp and you open a model, in, if you look up at the top, you'll see the windows. You want to go into Model Inter Info, and then you'll see a button at the bottom. I know this is a little hard to see. You'll see a button at the bottom that says Hit Purge. You just hit Purge Unused. What that does is it removes all the unnecessary faces from the model, slimming it down significantly. Okay. So when you import, it's coming in all nice and trim. Another bit I wanted to let you know is when I was working with this a few days ago, some of the models, if they're very complex and have what they call components, which is one of their SketchUp um, components or like uh, pre-built sections of models that, they, that you can add on. I noticed that they don't import cleanly if you use the uh, purge unused. Okay, So if the model has a lot of, if the model has a lot of components, be aware if you use that purge unused, it may not come in. It'll come in twisted. Okay? Just something for you to note uh, that I was encountering. Same thing with the warehouse. Some of the models come in very clean. Others don't. So you're going to have to experiment a little bit with um, the different models in the warehouse. Okay. When you are working with SketchUp and OpenSim, create a folder on your computer first. Find the model that you want to use when you go into SketchUp and you do File Export Day. Make sure that you're saving into that folder because what will happen is you'll have your model and your texture in that folder ready to import directly into OpenSim. Okay? If you save it outside of a folder, you're going to have your texture somewhere else, your model somewhere else. I may, they may not come in together. So make sure that you make a dedicated folder for that. I'm going to address a little bit about your loading mesh screen, which um, I was using you, Singularity has it, Singularity Viewer, Viewer as well as um, Firefox has it. I'm sorry, not Firefox. Ah, what am I thinking? <laughs> Firestorm. We, we're not talking browsers here. <laughs> Is the uh, load mesh model. Now, uh, I'm, hopefully you can see what I have up here. When you go to import a model, um, what I use for my settings is at the high level, I use generate because you want to generate your level of detail. Okay. Um, now, if you're not familiar with what level of detail is, I think most of us are, but level of detail deals with, it helps the game engine deal with rendering. So the further away a model is, you're gonna, not going to see it as complete as when you're close up to it. That's level of detail. Okay. What I use for the high setting, I use generate because the, the engine will actually generate, or the viewer will actually generate those levels of detail for you. And then on your medium, low, and lowest, just ask it to use the load above. Okay, that works really well for me um, on most models. But again, there are one or two models you're going to have to tweak those just a little bit and experiment. But in most cases, you can use that setting and it's going to come in pretty well. Another thing about importing, which I found was interesting, you can't adjust your size setting for when it comes in. They come in huge. <laughs> I was wearing, I put, wear airplane. Okay. Well, of course, airplanes are going to be large, but it was 
huge. I would say a quarter of my sim darn near. So <laughs> be aware that they come in very large. Okay, so you're going to have to grab those puppies and scale them down. This is just another um, picture from a C3D uh, and SketchUp where I was importing a fire engine, which you can actually see on um, on um, my my um, sim. If I can get my words right here, it's sitting in my firehouse and it looks beautiful. Uh, I brought in a full fire engine truck, and um, I will definitely tell you a little bit of the challenges of bringing this truck in because I had a lot of different pieces. One of the things is that when you when you bring your model in, you're going to bring your texture in separately, okay? Uh, just like any other texture, and you're going to apply it to your model. Um, now you're going to probably you're going to want to do a little bit of, of adjusting uh, of that texture on the model because it may come in a little screwed, but it won't take very long at all for you to get it adjusted to that model. But just be aware you will have to load your textures in separately, just like any other model. Okay. It was a little bit of a, a, a short presentation, everyone, but I do appreciate your, your time. Uh, at this time, we'll be fielding questions. <laughs> James, yeah, I understand that. No, no obvious for hurting the resin of the mesh. <laughs> Go ahead, Annabelle. What is my go-to modeler? Ah, okay. I use AC3D. And the reason why I use it, for one, it's very low cost. And um, I do have a note card, if anybody wants one, with um, the URLs. So you can go look for yourself. And it's extremely easy to use. Okay, it's push-pull. I actually teach how to use AC3D in game modeling. That's my specialty. And um, the reason that I use it is because it imports models so beautifully into OpenSim as well as Sculptees. It has, it just imports in just beautifully. Okay. Okay, Mike, um, his question, have you seen any issues with texturing and mesh objects with multiple faces defined? Yes, I actually have seen that issue um, when bringing in the textures. When you, actually, when you export out of SketchUp, if that's what you're referring to, are you referring to SketchUp? Mike, are you referring to SketchUp in your question? Okay, we'll we'll go ahead and address it as if it was a question about importing from SketchUp. Sticking, okay. Yeah, I have had, if it has multiple textures, then you're, you're going to be running into some problems, okay? Uh, the nice thing, the one of the nice things about SketchUp is it brings it in as a one-piece texture. Uh, it is definitely a headache if you've got multiple textures. 
you're going to have to bring them in individually and um, put them on each piece individually and then tweak them from there. Okay. Uh, Samira, you're asking about, do, I, do you import day models directly from SketchUp Warehouse or do you tweak them first? Actually, the only thing I do with Sketch, SketchUp models, you can tweak them. Um, I definitely, you know, if you want to add a piece or remove a piece or if you want to make some changes to the model, do that right up in SketchUp if you're familiar with it. The only tweak I actually do is the one where I said earlier to go in and actually delete the unused faces, and that slims the model down quite a bit. Um, like I said, the biggest problem I ran into as far as bringing them in was when they had components. Uh, it doesn't like to convert very cleanly in the day, day format. Okay, James. James asked, can you talk a little about texture mapping and unwrapping? I still don't quite get it. Well, the good thing, James, about um, using SketchUp, it does it for you. <laughs> now, AC3D is a little bit different. Uh, you do have to, um, you're welcome. You do have to, you can assign your, your materials right in AC3D to your model. And when it exports, it exports it as one piece. So importing it into OpenSim, it comes in clean, uh, textures and all. Okay. As far as unwrapping, you really don't need to do that unless you're dealing with, let's say that you're building a house. And you've got the front, rear, and sides of your house. Each one is a separate texture okay, or your roof material. What you're going to be doing, what unwrapping is, is you take each piece, front, rear, and each side, and the roof, and you put it on one, uh, what's the best way to describe this? Let's say you have an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. I usually demonstrate this, okay? You have an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. What you're going to want to do is take your front, back, both sides, and your roof texture and put them on that 8.5 by 11 piece of paper spaced. It doesn't have to be evenly as long as it's spaced and put on that one page. Therefore, you've just transferred it to one texture. In AC3D, then you just select the side, attach it right to the right side of the model, select the left side, attach it right, right to the left side of the model. Okay. Roof, attach it to the roof. Front, attach it to the front. And it can't, then again, when you export and save, it comes in as a complete texture. That's unwrapping. In a nutshell, it's really, that's pretty much the easiest way I could describe it, is you're just taking the textures and sticking it on an 8.5 by 11, or 256, as well, most often we use um, size um, in game modeling. So you're using 256. You're just sticking it on one piece of paper. Now, Max is... Um, can be very complicated with texturing and um, I'd be happy to go over more with that with you. That could be a whole lesson all by itself. Any other questions? I hope I'm being clear. I apologize to everybody today. Got a little excited and running a little fast. So Okay. Annabelle, um, yes, actually, believe it or not, I use paint.net for all of my 2D graphic use. Uh, it's super easy to cut, super easy to copy, edit, add texture. It's just a really easy to use program, and it's free. The format that I use, along with that, the format that I use um, when Making a texture um, is, uh, if you need transparency, you want to use PNG. If, you're, if you need just a really clean texture, you use JPEG. Okay, JPEG is, is fairly friendly with Open Simulator. Not like the old days where we had to use, oh, what was that? Um, TNG or something? <laughs> Yes, it's called paint.net. And um, 
paint.net. Just Google it. You'll find it. It'll come right up, paint.net. James, yes, actually, I do teach. Um, I do teach on a, um, I use a live software. You can see my screen, and I go through, uh, and I teach basic game modeling for Open Simulator and game engines. And um, you're welcome to contact me, contact me privately, and we can talk it over if you'd like. Actually, uh, Samira, I do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and I actually do a live meeting software, so you're actually live with me uh, going step-by-step -step through what you want to learn. Okay. I charge $20 an hour. Anyone else? I hope you guys found this useful. I apologize for it being so quick. Okay, we're a little bit early, but uh, if nobody has any more questions, then we might wrap it up. Thank you, Andres, for a very terrific presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. In this room, the next session will be Camelot and the Mists of Avalon with Heike Philp. Thank you again. To our speaker and the audience, we'll be back shortly with the next session. Thanks, guys. I'm, I was so nervous I rushed through it. <laughs> Should have made it longer. <laughs>